Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel! It's been a while since I've had a Genshin video for you all, but I'm so excited to be back and doing this again. I've actually got four videos lined up for you all this week, plus a live stream over on my Twitch on Friday as a celebration for my return. So anyways, enough about that, let's just get right into today's video, which is about a harbinger that seems to be missing from the Fatui. The Fatui Harbingers are some of the most important characters in Genshin Impacts. Not only are they well known across Devat, but they possess very high levels of power, and according to Nahida, the top three Harbingers have amounts of power that can surpass even that of the seven Archons. Without a doubt, the Harbingers will have a very important role throughout the story of Genshin, especially as we get closer and closer to the release of Snezhnaya in about two and a half years. But interestingly, it almost seems like one of the Harbingers is missing, as their ranks don't seem to add up. The confirmed lineup of Harbingers we have now is Piero as the Director, Dottore as the Second, Columbina as the Third, Pulsanella as the Fifth, Scaramouche as the Sixth, Sandron as the Seventh, Signora as the Eighth, Pantalone as the Ninth, and Tartaglia as the Eleventh. We also know of two other Harbingers, those being Capitano and Arlegino. These two are most likely the first and the fourth, respectively, as if you look in the voice lines for Tartaglia and Wanderer, the Harbingers are presented with them fitting into this order. Interestingly, Signora and Scaramouche's voice lines are below the others, showing how they are technically no longer Harbingers, and how someone else may take those places someday. However, that's not what this theory video is about, but it may be something I cover in the future. If you haven't noticed, there is still one seat empty besides the 6th and the 8th, that being the 10th. After digging through the wiki, I discovered there have been no mentions of the 10th seat in game, not even by the two Fatui and Mondstadt, who discussed the 6th and 8th seats being empty after the events of Inversion of Genesis. With this information, I figured there must be someone occupying the 10th seat of the Fatui, but I just didn't know who it was. So I took a look at the Commedia dell'arte which is the source from which the names of the Fatui Harbingers and some of their qualities are derived. After a bit of research, I came up with a few ideas of who the missing Harbinger could be. First up is Brigella, whose name means bother or contention, which sounds like a good fit for an antagonist. In the Commedia dell'arte, this character is one who rose from poverty and into wealth, but is now cruel to those below him on the social ladder. He is also quite fond of the money, with his mask even meant to portray a look of lust and greed. He is also a masterful liar and schemer, able to make up a lie for any situation he may find himself in. A harbinger of this nature would be very interesting indeed, and interestingly enough, he may have very well been adapted into another character who we've already met, or at least heard of. This character would be none other than the ninth of the harbingers, Pantalone. Pantalone's origins is the same as Brigella's, as they both rose from poverty and are quite fond of money. According to the Pale Flame Artifact's Moment of Cessation, Pantalone also desires to become the heart that pumps money around the world, or in other words, he's greedy, and wants to control all of the money in the world. In Yelan's story quest, he is also shown to be a masterful schemer. In the end, Yelan wanted to use a Fatui named Theophon as a way to learn more about the Fatui and their plots, but Pantalone easily predicted this, and was able to get Theophon out of Liyue and thus out of Yelan's reach before she could do anything about it. However, there is another side to Brigella. In some cases, he is more witty and fond of wordplay, and could also be seen singing, dancing, or even playing the guitar on stage. Perhaps this side of Brigella could be adapted into the missing Harbinger. He'd still have the trickery in wordplay, but with more of a focus on how he acts and presents himself. The character of Brigella also had many variants throughout different plays in the style of Commedia dell'arte. I'm going to talk about two here, the first being Scapino. His name means Little Escape Artist, and he is described as being a far more cowardly, nervous, and less clever version of Brigella. He is known to flee from fights, not only in the outside world, but in his own head as well, jumping from one thought or plan to the next, and being quite fickle all around. 
Some elements of Scapino could be used for a Genshin equivalent of Brigella, leading to an unpredictable Harbinger who seems to be all over the place both physically and mentally. Now, another character who was derived from Brigella was the famous Figaro from the Barber of Seville. Figaro is described as calm and collected, while also being helpful and brave. However, he can also be cynical in his worldview, and can also be irrational when he's angry. In the Barber of Seville, he also says, I must force myself to laugh at everything, lest I be obliged to weep. Putting all these traits of all these characters together, we could get a lower-leveled harbinger who likes to show off and be presentable, all to hide what's behind the mask. A man who the world has betrayed or something of the like, or even someone who has their own agenda beyond the Fatui. Brigella has a lot of variants and characters that were inspired by him, so the possibilities are endless. Anyways, moving on from Brigella and his variants, I'd like to talk about a very interesting character named Kamiko. Kamiko is unique in the Commedia dell'arte, as he exists both in the world of the play, as well as in the audience, acting as sort of a liaison between the two separate worlds. The first character that immediately came to my mind when I read this description was Paimon, though I really have my doubts. Paimon is our traveling companion, and she has the unique ability to disappear and reappear at will. However, we don't know where exactly she goes when she disappears. She could disappear to communicate with the Fatui, but I think this is one of the least likely groups she'd align herself with, and Celestia or even the Abyss sibling would be more likely options. As for who Kamiko could potentially be then, I was thinking a Descender, or a person who is not from Tavad. A Descender could give the Fatui a ton of information, even beyond what's known in Ermensul. This would also allow them to know things that have been erased from Ermensul, such as Greater Lord Rukadavada and the Wanderer's true past as the Balladeer, and would give more explanation as to how they know about Descenders. This may also be a reason as to why we haven't heard of or seen this Harbinger, as the Fatui would most likely want to keep them a secret. The knowledge a Descender could have is extremely valuable, and they would obviously want to keep it for themselves then. They would also keep them safe, not wanting them to get hurt or killed so they wouldn't lose this valuable asset. Now, I'd like to get into the final potential Harbinger I looked into for this video, that being the Inamorati. The Inamorati are also known as the Lovers, and are quite central to the story of the Commedia dell'arte. It is said that despite obstacles, the Lovers are always united by the end. That last line instantly reminded me of the Travelers, especially considering their theme of being reunited by the end of the story. However, I highly doubt one of the Travelers will join the Fatui and become a Harbinger, with the playable sibling being so against their actions, and the Abyss sibling being a part of the Abyss Order, who is an enemy of the Fatui. To me, a more likely option for a character who fits the Inamorati will be someone who the Tsuritsa loved. Perhaps she lost someone very, very important to her in the Cataclysm, which may be part of the reason why she is no longer the God of Love, as she blames herself for the loss of this someone. The final seat could be left open in hopes that this person is still alive somehow, and part of her goal is to find this person, then exact revenge against the heavenly principles and even fate itself for allowing this to happen. There's a lot of pieces to this one, so I'm thinking this will become its own theory video that I have to research more at some point in the future. As I've said, there are countless possibilities as to why there seems to be a Harbinger missing from the Fatui's roster. We'll just have to wait for more information so we can get a more concrete answer to these questions. It could be as simple as there is no 10th Harbinger at the moment, and the seat has been empty since we started our journeys. There are also characters that we know of that could potentially join the Fatui and fill the empty seats left by Scaramouche and Signora, but those are theories for other times. Maybe we might get an interlude arc on quest revolving around the Fatui that gives us more information on the Harbingers, as A Winter Night's Lazo had the title of Tevat Chapter Interlude Teaser as well, potentially hinting towards a quest of this nature. I plan to have some more theories about the Fatui come out at some point soon, but I have a few ideas I want to cover before I get back around to those. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Sources and further readings are also in the description if you want to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.